Welcome to America's Commercial Real Estate Show, your source for intel, forecasts, and success strategies. Hello, I am Michael Bull, and I really appreciate you being with us. This segment is brought to you by CommercialAgentSuccess.com. If you're in commercial brokerage, check out this video training. We have an incredible show for you today. The name of our show is Real Estate Financing 2018. And boy, what a topic. I mean, with what's going on in the economy, tax reform, stock market volatility, what should we expect moving forward? What will interest rates do? What will underwriting do? What are some of the best sources for your properties? We're going to talk about it today. Please welcome my guest, Tom Walsh. Tom is Senior Vice President with Grandbridge Real Estate Capital. He's here in Studio One. Tom, thanks for being back with us. It's nice to be back again. Well, Tom, let's, let's, let's answer that first question first, I guess, is rates. What are mortgage rates going to do? You know, I guess first you, you look at the Fed and what you expect the Fed's going to do. I think anything that's tied to LIBOR is probably going to see a, uh, a 75 basis point increase over 2018, probably in 325 basis point increments. Um, what's interesting on, on the fixed rate side, uh, as we've seen in the last few days, just a big run up in the Treasury rate and I'm sure there are a lot of people out there that, that are thinking that, that that directly impacts their nominal mortgage rates. The reality is, and what's going on behind the curtain that a lot of people haven't seen is, is the credit spreads have come in quite a bit. Um, maybe, maybe as much as 40 to 50 basis points over the last few weeks. So even though the Treasury may have taken a 50 basis point jump or a 60 basis point jump, that doesn't mean the nominal rates went up that way. The nominal rates may have only gone up maybe you know 10 or 15 basis points. And why are these spreads compressing a little? Um, just market factors. A lot of financing. Uh, a lot of financing. Um, you know, there's um, everyone's is everyone is chasing yield, and and while developers and investors are chasing yield, so are lenders. Right. And one of the ways to, you know, it's just a, it's a supply and demand factor. If you're trying to get more and more business, you keep pushing your rates down to generate the business you need. Um, and mortgages are ex extremely desirable in the fixed income investment world right now. And, and, and everyone is trying to get their money out, uh, do as much business as they can. And that's obviously a, 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 lot, of, a lot of supply price drops and interest rates drop. And so your expectations then for rate increases for most commercial real estate mortgages moving through 2018 is what I range? suspect over, over the, the entire span of 2018 mm -hmm. that you're probably going to get some level of, of overall increase in the fixed rate market. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to be drastic. Um, I, I would think maybe if you started back on January 1 and go to December 31st, maybe like a 30 or 40 basis point uh, increase overall in rate. It's not going to be a, a rate increase that's going to sh throw a shock into the commercial can real estate system. you guarantee that for me, Tom? Can oh, I can. <laughs> Where do I sign? Where do I sign? Yeah. That's what I need. I need a guarantee. I mean, we are, we are now in about the sixth or seventh year of rates have to go up. Right, yeah. You know? You're right, right. And we were wrong for the first at least five of those years. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and in fact, in a lot of cases, rates went down in yeah. years that we thought they were going up. Yeah. Right now, we're actually seeing increases. I increases in the indices, decreases in the spreads, but a net increase, I would say. Right, and then when you look at the, the stock market, too, it's been a bull market for a long time. We've had a little volatility recently. Mm -hmm. Is some of that based on interest rates? and? I think there's an expectation, uh, 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 there's two things involved there. You have inflation and you have interest rates. Mm -hmm. Interest rates going up put pressure on earnings. Mm -hmm. Every company out there in one way or another borrows money. Mm -hmm. So any increase in interest rates is pretty much goes to the bottom line of companies. So there's some pressure on, 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 on net revenue on that case. Um, I think inflation is probably even a bigger factor. We might, people are seeing that we might actually have a little inflation out there after so many years of virtually none. Yeah. Now, one of the sources, Tom, for a lot of our um, audience for financing is, is banks, right? Mm -hmm. So are the banks really under more scrutiny now 
for underwriting? And the banks appear to be under increasing regulatory pressure. Um, we see that in, in manifest itself in two different ways, in, in how they underwrite, how, cons how conservative versus aggressive they may want to be, and their overall appetite for business. And, and we, we have seen, uh, I would say, the appetite for commercial real estate financing kind of drop on the bank side. Mm -hmm. And I suspect that is directly related to the to the, the regulatory pressure on them. The regulators are so bound and determined that we are not going to have a repeat of 2008 to yeah. 2010. That it's probably what you would expect. It's probably an overreaction going the other direction now, and putting a thumb on those banks and trying to make sure they don't get too far out over their skis in commercial real estate. My personal opinion, I don't know that it's that necessary right now, yeah. but clearly the regulators, that, that's the tack that they're taking. Yeah, well, you know, that's a good point. They, they're looking for safety in the financial world uh, yes. at the Fed, and uh, I'm, we're glad they're there. So um, one of the things I think that some borrowers look at, they're looking at a commercial real estate deal, especially if they're not in the business every day of getting loans, and, and they talk to a bank, and the bank is kind of, well, as one economist came on the show a few weeks ago, he said they poo-poo the, uh, the asset class or, or, or the uh, value of the property when really the bank maybe can't even really do loans or doesn't really care to do loans in that, in that sector or, or maybe not at all. So what are some of the other sources? So you, how, how are life insurance companies okay. looking at uh, commercial real estate today loans-wise? The life insurance, the life insurance industry is very active right now. They have to decide in their fixed income areas, and every one of those has a fixed income area where they're investing money. And the two big fixed income products are corporate bonds and mortgages. And mortgages have been outperforming corporate bonds for, uh, we're running on a few years of that now, almost to the point that, that some of the life insurance companies, they can't get enough mortgage business. Mm -hmm. um, many of them, going into a year will tell you our, our budget for the year is 300 million or 500 million or the, in the big players a billion, two billion. But they'll also usually add at the end of that, but if we can do more, we'll do more. So are you they know. open to a few more classes of properties and size properties than they used to be? Sure. Yes. What they haven't really gotten into is, is over being overly aggressive in underwriting. Okay. But there are life insurance companies now that really like self-storage which you go back probably four or five years ago was not really a life company product. Um, life companies have recognized, I think, that the office markets in many markets in the United States have come back stronger than anyone probably thought they would. Um, so life insurance companies are, are, are anxious to put out money on office. Yeah. Like, like a lot of other, uh, like most of the lender classes, they're, um, they're cautious on retail. Everyone's you know, trying to figure out the Amazon Walmart effect and what the long term is for retail. And uh, it, it seems to be a more difficult question than it is an answer. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a very hard question to answer. A lot of theories, but all of it is what's going to happen in five or 10 years from now. So they're just theories right now. So how can you finance a retail deal right now? Who, what's the best source? Um, if you, it, it would depend on, on your loan to value, loan to cost ratio, okay? If you are in the lower, and, and let's determine, let's call lower, say 65% or lower, okay? okay loan to value ratio. Loan, loan to value. Yeah. There is a lot of life company financing out there for that, as long as your product has the, has the you know, it checks all the other boxes. It's a yeah. good location, it's got a good tenant mix. Um, if you're trying to get 75% out of a quote unquote Joe Average retail center today, mm -hmm. you're gonna struggle to get that out of a life insurance company. Yeah. The CMBS market will pick that up, though. Okay. Um, okay. Now, the offset of that is the structure in the CMBS loan is going to have TI and LC reserves. It's going to have replacement reserves. Um, it's going to deal with specific tenancy, a, a major tenant that's going to roll in the fourth year of a 10-year loan. They're going to structure for that. Um, so you may get nailed on reserves or cash flow sweeps along the way mm -hmm. uh, where you wouldn't get that from the life insurance company. But if you need to get maximum leverage, then the CMBS industry is where you're going to go for that. Yeah, and you can get a pretty good rate from them, right? Sure. I, I mean, you get good rates from everybody. Right and what now. are some typical rates today? 
Um, you know, we're seeing, I would say, the life companies, a lot of them in the, in the say, mid to high fours with where the Treasury is sitting right now. On, on a lower leverage deal, uh, we just talked about a deal this morning, there's a lower leverage deal, the spread was 150 on that, which, which is extremely low. And that was from a relatively small life insurance company. Mm -hmm. And usually there's, there, there, there's a, a correlation there. The larger life insurance companies usually have access to cheaper money. Their spreads tend to be lower. This was a fairly small life insurance company looking at a 150 over deal. So that puts you in what? Uh, Low fours. How about that Fannie deal? and Freddie rates today? Fannie and Freddie rates are are um, fairly steady. Mm -hmm. um, they they have seen the effect of, of credit spreads shrinking. Um, so you've seen some of the direct offset because they they price their fixed rate stuff off the treasury. So you've got a direct increase in in the indexes indices, um, but you've seen an offset in lower credit spreads again. Um, most of the rates I would say today are in, are in the fours, mid fours or so. We're not seeing hardly any rates on what I would call normal kind of Joe average property getting to five. Okay. Most of the stuff we're doing is still in the fours. Still incredible rates. Well, we're yeah. going to take a short break and I'm going to ask Tom about default rates. What are we seeing for defaults out there? And also some alternative sources for financing. How are those sources doing? And we'll talk about some strategies to get the best loan for your property. Stay with us. I'm Michael Bull. This is America's Commercial Real Estate Show.